everybody, Tony D and Little Joan with a hot take, hopefully a final hot take on the Chaz. Uh, looks like the Chaz was torn down today. I watched a little bit of the live uh, feed and the cops did what they should have done, you know, hours into it, which is walk through and push everybody out. Now that's not to say I'm not a supporter of protest. I'm a peace protester. But when you set up barricades, when you stop cars and traffic, when you uh, start living in front of somebody's business or house on the street, you're doing more than just protesting. You're, you're, you're camping out. Uh, and this was called an autonomous zone, which then they had to change to an occupied, what was it? What did the P stand for? CHOP, uh, occupied protect, protectorate. Uh, I don't know. But, um, you know, whether it's an occupation or an autonomous zone, I mean, these are just semantics that the extreme leftists are playing. Um, you're disrupting people's lives who could be your ally in, in the fight. And George Floyd is so far out of this at this point. Uh, the Black Lives Matter people are have allowed their movement to disintegrate into anti-fuzz, I don't know, puppet. Um, and they're, they're having a great old time. And behind the scenes, the Democrats are just laughing because they've collected, or, or I should say, they've extorted a ton of money from businesses who are petrified of being called racist and being banned by people. Um, and they've extorted, in my understanding, it's, it's over a billion over a billion dollars. And uh, there is no mechanism to check how much of the Black Lives Matter money actually goes to black lives and, uh, and how much goes to Democrats. And the fact that they had their campaign finance law in, their, in the little fine print on the Black Lives Matter site should tell you something. They're, they're funneling the money to Democrats. They're funneling the money to Democrats. And this is a very cynical thing that'll, that will uh, it's not, not only will it not help black people, it's actually going to hurt black people because Antifa's antics aren't associated with Antifa. They're associated with Black Lives Matter. People are seeing BLM, BLM. The, some of the rioters are chanting BLM, BLM. And uh, the media is setting Black Lives Matter up for a fall. And Fortunately, there, there are a lot of black voices speaking out against that. Uh, there was a gentleman who, he tore down the signs for Black Lives Matter, like they'd put them across some kind of chain link fence. I forget where it was. I want to say Seattle, but I'm not sure if it was there. He just started tearing them down in his neighborhood. And some white guy came along and like tackled him, like tackled him and harassed him and screamed at him like a maniac. It was bizarre. I mean, here's a guy, he's a black guy, and <laughs> he does not believe in that movement. He sees it he sees it for what it is, I believe. Um, this cynical ploy by the Democrats and an exploit by Antifa to use black people as a shield to run amok and push communism. Um, July 4th is just around the corner and there are many counter protests uh, being being set up. And if you're in one of these counter protests, I beg of you, don't let these people lure you into a trap. They want you to attack them. They want to play the victim and they're going to do everything in their power to make you mad. Don't fall for it. Don't be the ones who throw the first punch. Don't throw a punch at all if you can help it. I know that's very difficult. I mean, they're going to throw bottles and all kinds of stuff at you. Be very wary of that. Be very wary. Watch out for each other and don't attack. If you go on the offense, understand, and even if you go on the defense after being severely attacked, you will be portrayed as the aggressors. You will. Because the media has these people's backs. They... they they think they're they're helping the Democrats by doing this. Um, I believe that the Democrats behind the scenes have told their media allies absolutely help 
the Antifa members, the Chaz members, the BLM members. Help them at every turn. Make them look good. That's why we get the term peaceful protesters when there are literally buildings on fire and stuff being thrown at CNN anchors. Uh, it's ridiculous. So you have to be very wary, very wary indeed. And, um, you know, in New York, there's another Chaz being set up. I believe it's right outside of C City Hall. And Bill de Blasio, God, he, he's another disgrace. I mean, the, the mayor of Seattle's a disgrace and Bill de Blasio is a big disgrace. I don't think he stands a chance in the next election, uh, you know, big time. But that being said, you know, there was this scene in this uh, viral video you can look up. Um, there's a guy, shirtless guy in a skirt, and he's chastising a line of cops in front of City Hall for being uneducated and not knowing as much as he does. And then there's there's this white girl in the side guy lines like, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, <laughs> kind of BS. And it really just, and, and, and the headline that somebody retweeted was bourgeois socialism. And that's what it is. It's it's these children of rich elitists who think they know better than those blue collar dummies who are who they call the cops, and uh, and they're going to tell them, yeah, these people are the same people who will piss their pants and call the cops the moment something goes wrong. The moment something goes wrong, I hope these protesters continue to live in New York as it, as crime spirals out of control. I hope they get to experience firsthand the fear of uh, calling, the co calling the cops and having them say, well, sir, I'm not sure we can get to you uh, within the next 40 minutes. Let, let them deal with that as somebody's trying to break in their door. Yeah. Um, but, you know, a lot of these people will, will, won't pay. A lot of these people are from rich families. They'll go out to the rich neighborhoods and uh, continue to live in their mom's basement while promoting communism and talking talking a big game on Reddit. Um, but uh, uh, it, 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 it's really just spiraled out of control. Fortunately, though, um, these people are few in number, but their tactics are to make it feel like there's thousands and thousands and thousands of them when really they're just a few hundred. Um, there is a force that I believe is augmenting these protesters, especially the communist ones, and that's the communist government of China. Um, they seem to be very active on Reddit, uh, which is a place that a lot of the protesters go and brag about their exploits. But not only that, the communist Chinese seem to have a ton of shills, especially in uh, uh, subreddits like uh, World Political cartoons and whatnot. Um, I say that because I had personal experience talking to these people and they seem to defend communist China in weird ways when you talk about them. Um, while at the same time they're trying to push how racist the United States is. But when you point out that China itself is extremely racist, I mean, China is an extremely racist country. Um, they have uh, uh, quite a few Nigerian expats there who are trying to get an education or working. And during the first phase of the Wuhan virus, they, uh, and, the, and these are Nigerian people, so they're not Chinese who went to Nigeria and became Nigerian. These are native Nigerians, so they're, they're, they're black. And um, during the, the virus, they were kicked out of their apartments. They, there was one college student. He was forced to live under a bridge for four days with no food. Uh, nobody would let them in the stores. Very, very racist country. And not only do you not hear a peep from these protesters about China. Uh, in fact, they chastise you if you support the Hong Kong protesters. Uh, fight for freedom, which is being lost, by the way. The Hong Kongers are being uh, slowly ground down by the Chinese government. But not a peep from these protesters. They're too busy trying to push communism 
uh, in the United States. They're too busy trying to push their, you know, professor's agenda from college because they're oh so smart. But, you know, you blue collar people out there to them, uh, you're a bunch of dummies who don't know that, that they're being gaslit by uh, capitalism. So, uh, to put a bow on all this, um, what we have to do is confront these people. Now, when I say confront, I, again, you got to watch the violence. They, these people want a fight. They want you to attack them. You know, if you look at the footage of the guy who ended up... Uh, shooting the protesters who tried to tear down that statue, I think it was in New Mexico, I think it was in Albuquerque. You know, those guys attacked this guy, he pulls out a gun, they still kept attacking him, and then when he shot one of the attackers, that guy was like, I can't believe you shot me, you know? I mean, like, that was kind of his reaction. My God, you shot me! Like, this is after getting hit by skateboards, and, uh, you know, he pulled out the gun, and they still didn't leave him alone. I mean, that's the kind of reactionary reaction you could expect from these people. The moment you're able to exert force on them, they will cower and call for mommy, uh, call for the cops and say, you me, you hurt me, you're a bad person. They'll say and do anything because they are a bunch of whiners. Um, so, you know, the best place to confront them is if you're, if you know one, if you know a college student who's caught up in this, the best place to confront them is at home. You know, if you're a relative. Now, I'm not saying dox anybody. I'm not saying I'm not saying go to their houses or anything like that. If you don't know these people, that's a different story. But I'm saying if you know someone who's a college student and they're caught up in this, you really got to talk to them and say, hey, this is BS. You don't know what you're talking about. You, you're not old enough to know things. You, you, you were supposed to go to school to learn about life and then go out in the world and learn things. You're not supposed to just immediately take, you know, two semesters of gender studies and immediately start applying it to the world. Um, and you got to slow down these, these college students because if they're a relative of yours or a friend of yours, uh, they can get caught up. Um, the guy in um, uh, Provo, Utah, who shot into an SUV actually hit the driver. He's under arrest. He's facing uh, attempted murder charges. He's going away. I believe, uh, you know, he's still a suspect, but uh, I, I think he's screwed because a lot of these guys don't understand. They're so self-righteous. They don't know how to commit a crime. Um, you know, they're, they're, not, they're not hiding their trail. It's all over Facebook. It's all over Twitter. And Twitter and Facebook don't erase that stuff. So, you know, when they threaten people or say, hey, I'm going to buy a gun and go to the protest, no one stops them from putting that stuff on Facebook. So... You got to stop these people, if if not for the country, for for your for them, for their own safety. Stop stop this craziness. Uh, tell you know, tell a friend that communism is bad before they uh, get caught up in it. Because um, once they do, uh, there may be no going back until something terribly tragic happens. So try to try to do that before something tragic happens.